Thank you. Uh, kia ora koutou. Um, yeah, so my name's Kratiana Tauru. Um, I hail from um, Kaitahu in the south and Ngāti Kahununu in the north. Um, I guess today I'm not going to preach any conclusions, but just more um, offer some highlights from some research that uh, we've, I've done this year. Um, I, I also hope that it's going to raise some awareness on what is an Indigenous domain name, um, the difference between um, society, multi society and multi society online, and for any decision makers to actually have a think about how they should perhaps brand their online content. Uh, whether they use an Indigenous domain name or uh, a non-Indigenous domain name. Uh, the presentation is also um, available on my website as well if you would want to download it. Um, as with any research, there's always sponsors, so um, I have to acknowledge the sponsors who have made the research possible. Cool. So for those of you who don't already know, um, I'll be discussing what an Indigenous domain name is, uh, what an international domain name is, um, public, corporate, um, education, and uh, Māori online users' perceptions of Indigenous domain names, what they are and how they're used. So New Zealand's quite unique in the fact that we have three Indigenous domain names. Um, in the world, there's only five, so um, we have three of them, which <laughs> it's... Um, it, it, um, an Indigenous domain name can also um, be stretched out to include um, any domain name with Māori language in it, or uh, an international domain name that has a, a Māori macron. Uh, the other two Indigenous domain names of the world um, are Native Americans, uh, the nsn.us, and nsn.gov. Um, some academics say that that only equates to 1.5 uh, domain names as US is a country uh, domain name and that the gov is a, um, a generic top level domain name. Um, I don't see the difference personally. So. An international domain name uh, is a, um, it's basically a domain name that can use uh, any non-English uh, Roman characters um, they're very popular overseas, uh, mainly um, in the Chinese-speaking countries, um, India, Japan, uh, Hindi, etc. The issue with IDNs, though, is that they can't be used by default uh, with a lot of web servers, and at this stage can't be used in email. Um, so the IDNs use what we call punicode. So the address at the bottom is my website address um, using a macron on the A on Māori. So uh, we've, in New Zealand we've had IDN usage since July 2010 uh, after I approached the, the governing body of the internet in New Zealand and, and questioned why we aren't using um, IDNs like the rest of the world are. Uh, so after some consultation, that became available in 2010. Um, at the moment, we only have 119 IDNs in the whole .nz um, hierarchy. Uh, a lot of that, um, the research has showed that people don't know that it's possible to use a Macron, uh, they don't know how to use it. And interestingly enough, a survey of all .iwi, .nz registrants and um, a large proportion of Māori.nz registrants didn't know that you could use a Macron in, any, um, in their domain names. So here's a brief overview of the IDN usage in New Zealand. Um, as you can see, .co.nz is the highest brand. Um, that, that, that's mainly due to um, protecting of domain names from corporates and um, online you know, trademarks, etc. Um, the the .iwi.nz um, domain has um, two IDN registrations that will be covered a little bit later by the same company, uh, by the same iwi, sorry. And I guess disappointingly is the, the lack of Macron usage by New Zealand government, uh, where there's only one uh, Macron which is used in a bilingual name, which I'll cover soon. So 
So, so in New Zealand, we have only, there's only three companies that offer the um, ability to register an IDN, um, and all three of those companies make it very difficult for non-technical people to register um, IDN domain names. Um, there's also uh, one of the country's largest domain name resellers doesn't actually offer .maori.nz at all. <coughs> so so .maori.nz was originally applied for in 1997 uh, as the Kohanga Reo uh, in New Zealand were refused um, to register a, a .org.nz or a .ac.nz address uh, because they didn't meet the criteria. Um, so basically they were turned down when they applied for .maori.nz there wasn't enough support, and at that stage, the internet governance body in New Zealand was still maturing and hadn't actually um, contemplated how best uh, to write a policy to allow new domain names to be created. Uh, in 2000, uh, we, the New Zealand Māori Internet Society, applied for .māori.nz on behalf of all Māori. Uh, that application was declined, and basically the online community called us racist for um, applying for it. Uh, again, in 2002, we reapplied and we were successful. Uh, it's important to note that it's um, .maori.nz is New Zealand's, uh, is the world's fourth international um, indigenous domain name, but it's the first indigenous domain name in the world that was um, applied for by the indigenous people for the indigenous people. And it's for anyone who um, wants to be Maori, who has a Maori product, uh, just anything Māori. So, statistically speaking, the .maori.nz domain name is not very well used. Um, in 2002, uh, there was a number of registrations there, about 356, I think it was. Um, the, the year after, you'll see a decline. Uh, that was due to cyber squatting. And one company registered a, quite a few different um, iwi names in the .maori.nz area. Uh, that company, after a little bit of pressure, finally gave those names back to the iwi, uh, many of whom didn't want to use their .iwi.nz names. Um, the large rise in uh, the usage of .maori.nz happened in 2012. Uh, that was largely um, an Australian company was offering domain names for $1 per annum registration. And unfortunately, an online community um, thought it would be quite funny to um, make jokes about Māori and um, cyber squat names. Um, so there was, that led to a, a large increase of domain name registrations. Um, it's hard to say exactly how many, but I can say there was at least 300 names registered by that group. Um, statistically, about 10% of all .maori.nz names are either racist or cyber squatted. Um, hapu prefer to use .maori.nz as opposed to um, a .iwi.nz. Uh, there's a lack of interest in .maori.nz by um, companies and government entities. Uh, a lot of Māori businesses see it as being too restrictive for the audience. Uh, the perceptions of .maori.nz, um, as you can see, um, web developers prefer to um, offer a .co.nz or a .com. Um, the .com is usually because it's a lot cheaper to register a domain name and still sell it at the same price as a .nz. Um, a lot of other people um, yeah, basically view .maori.nz as having a limited audience and uh, an overwhelming majority of uh, online Māori preferred to use free URLs um, such as facebook.com slash um, WordPress addresses, etc., um, simply because they were free. So Māori web designers, the, the people who uh, we expected would be promoting .maori.nz um, do it on a case-by-case -case basis. And again, their preference is for .co.nz or .com. Um, so, and so .maori is actually ranks number five on the list of preferred domain names by uh, Maori, Maori web developers. <coughs> so in New Zealand, we have 27 um, companies that can sell uh, .maori.nz. 
Um, there's five who refuse to sell multi.nz for whatever reason. And unfortunately, New Zealand's largest and most influential domain name company won't recognise .maori.nz at all. Uh, as I said before, um, there's a lot of um, yeah, a lot of cyber squatting, and um, a lot of people made good use of that uh, one dollar domain name registrations. Um, so in New Zealand, we, we have .maori.nz with a macron on the A. Um, it, it's by default, it will work with any .maori.nz web address or email. Uh, that was implemented in 2010 with the IDNs. Um, as I said before, it's not email friendly and web servers need to um, be configured to use it. Um, out of the you know, 1,200 or so .maori.nz web addresses that are online have been registered, um, only about a quarter of them uh, make use of the Macron A. Um, Maori web developers um, typically don't know it exists. Um, I, I spoke to one web developer who controls about 125 domain names, .maori.nz domain names, and he wasn't even aware of it. Um, for, for anyone that does have a .maori.nz um, domain name, you can um, just add, um, add a parked domain through cPanel or um, ask your web developer or host to um, add it for you. Um, so the, the world's first indigenous domain name, .ewi.nz, uh, was created, created in 1994 uh, by the Internet Governance Body um, of New Zealand. Uh, it was basically a, a knee-jerk reaction to a request by Ngai Tahu for, a, um, for a, a representative domain name on the internet. Um, it was, it's moderated, so you have to go through a process of um, registering to, to use that .ewi.nz. Uh, the, regist the moderation policies at um, register.ewi.nz. And we have two companies who resell .ewi.nz. Uh, the, the first company, it wasn't economic uh, for them to offer IDNs in .ewi, so um, I sought out a second registrar who did have the ability to register IDNs. Uh, overwhelmingly from the um, 83, 84 iwi who do have .ewi.nz, uh, the majority of them are happy with the policy. Um, uh, yeah, they see, or we moderate .ewi.nz to eliminate the cyber squatting, which I've already spoken about. Um, it's, it's seen as a good, solid brand for iwi, and it also protects indigenous knowledge and, and um, yeah, and, and indigenous culture. So just briefly, this is the um, the iwi.nz criteria. You have to be a traditional Maori iwi. Um, you have to have some whakapapa to be able to prove that you are a representative and that you are an iwi. Um, you, you have to be a legal body, which just helps us to, um, with law, if there's anyone who tries to be an iwi who aren't, that just helps us. Again, this is just saying that iwi need to use um, appropriate names of their iwi. And just recently we were asked to include the um, <coughs> The MIO, um, a number of iwi couldn't register at .iwi.nz because of um, they weren't they were excluded, so we've added that in now. Uh, statistics of of .iwi uh, in 2000, uh, Maori took over moderation of .iwi.nz, and so from 2000 onwards, you can see the increase in participation. Um, prior to that. Um, there was only two or three iwi that were eligible for .iwi.nz simply because uh, Māori weren't involved with the moderation policy. Um, unfortunately, again, uh, .iwi.nz is only heard about by word of mouth. There's no advertising. It's not a commercial reality for companies to offer it. So there's 130 iwi who don't use .iwi.nz. Uh, with .co.nz being the most, or being the alternative for it. Um, some, some iwi just um, redirect their, <coughs> their .co or .maori back to their .iwi. 
So, so here I'm just going to um, discuss the New Zealand government entities, um, their attitudes to indigenous domain names and te reo Māori. Um, I've assumed that everyone here is familiar with the Treaty of Waitangi and familiar with the Māori Language Act. So, uh, so there is um, five, five um, government domain names which are uh, moderated by government for government. Uh, as you can see, they're all there. All, all of the moderation policy, none of the moderation policies consider Macron usage. Um, and there seems to be no consideration for the Treaty of Waitangi or cultural aspects of anything. Uh, I've surveyed all the um, government entities in New Zealand, and the majority of them believed that they could use Te Reo Māori in a domain name or use their bilingual name if they, if they tried but they all agreed that no one was 100% certain if they could or not. But I think it's important to note that um, some people haven't applied for a bilingual name in DOC government or anything else simply because it wasn't part of the policy. Again, most government departments don't use their um, bilingual name, the reasoning being that the names are too long, um, it's about branding, but the majority of government departments do use their uh, bilingual name on their websites for search engine optimization and in their offline branding. Um, th this can cause a, an issue when it comes to trust between Māori and government. Uh, if a government department doesn't use their bilingual name completely, uh, if they don't use a bilingual website, then um, there's, there's some barriers there for Māori to want to share information or to interact with the government department online. Uh, the, the, the use of long bilingual names as well could um, could create a. Uh, I mean, people should um, perhaps consider reevaluating how they create bilingual names, um, so that they can be more web friendly. Um, so, in terms of indigenous domain names, there's um, three government departments who have registered their bilingual domain, and only one of those departments actually use their name, and that's the um, Ministry of Culture and Heritage. Um, and I noticed out um, in the foyer that their branding is more dominant for their bilingual name, the Māori name, than the English name. Um, the other two bilingual registrations just simply don't work. And it's interesting to note that the, the Māori Language Commission, who um, basically the, kaiti, um, the kaitiaki of our te reo Māori, um, also don't use um, their own orthographic writing conventions in their web address. And Te Puni Kōkiri, Te Māngai Pāho, and Te Papa also don't use um, alternative English names and often prefer just to use abbreviations. So out of the 24 um, registered Māori.nz names by government, there's only um, a seven of them go to a, seven of them go to a, a Māori part of the website, a bilingual website. And this, uh, there's 17 of them just simply aren't used. When, when it comes to branding, New Zealand government, aside from using .government, .govt.nz, um, .co.nz is the preferred branding um, alternative domain name. And you see .maori.nz is 10th um, out of 20 in the various different domain names. Even our um, education system, our um, Kurakopapa Māori, um, our, our partially bilingual schools don't use um, dot Māori or their bilingual name um, in web addresses. Uh, Kurakopapa Māori are more likely to use an abbreviation as opposed to their whole name, and none of them have used an IDN where it should have been used. Tertiary institutions are exactly the same. Um, none of them appeared to use um, their bilingual name as a web site, uh, as a web domain name. Um, only two organisations had a .maori.nz, and one of them had expired this year doing the research. Uh, there was four other .maori.nz addresses which had been cyber squatted, and they went to various different things. 
So the overall usage of Te Reo Māori in, in the .NZ is 5,318 Māori words. Uh, the majority of those words are New Zealand place names, flora, fauna names. <coughs> so here's a breakdown of the, um, how Te Reo Māori is being used in .NZ. Um, it is interesting to note that .māori.nz and .iwi.nz are the two highest used um, domains for Māori language. Um, the word Māori being used in a domain name, um, some stats there. Um, again, it's, it's hard to tell exactly what um, the word Māori is being used in those. The word Aotearoa is also quite common, and it's also a, a common word used for um, not-for-profit organisation names, company names, and product names. We asked we asked Māori if they would support a, a URL shortener, um, like the the Bitly URL shortener, and the overwhelming response was that no one wanted a, a URL shortener. It was um, seen as corrupting the Te Reo Māori. Um, but again, there was a, a huge preference to use um, social media URLs um, for website addresses and an overwhelmingly growing, uh, overwhelming um, support for a bilingual um, domain name system, uh, which I'll cover in a couple of slides. Um, corporate attitudes to .maori.nz uh, is um, wanting. Uh, while on the surface, those four addresses may look like um, the, the corporations being um, indigenous friendly, that um, all four of those names are registered to individuals. Um, all four of those corporations were told that of the, the breach, the cyber squatting, and they still remain in um, other people's hands. Uh, the New Zealand government attitude is similar. Uh, the Winstop Māori.nz um, a few years ago redirected to a, a almost an exact duplicate of the WINS website but was full of uh, racist rhetoric and um, images which aren't very appropriate. Uh, we successfully had that domain name cancelled and a few years later the name's back again. Um, when I last looked at it yesterday it wasn't being used. Um, we also have the, the issue um, of our Māori leaders and our tribal leaders and politicians. Again, all four of those names there have all been cyber squatted. Um, at one stage or another, they've gone to different um, websites which aren't represented by those um, political parties. Uh, so the future of Indigenous domain names, it, it looks positive. Um, next year, we're gonna have a new um, domain .kiwi, which is like gonna be an alternative to .nz. Uh, that, that company has um, agreed to reserve a bilingual alternative of the current .nz domain name system for Māori. Uh, they've also reserved all iwi names, um, god names, and a, and a list of other um, names which could be seen as being offensive or, or to protect Māori. Uh, sometime next year, the .nz hierarchy is going to be flattened, so you don't have to register .co.nz or .māori.nz. Um, at some stage next year. Um, this could either have a benefit or be to the um, extreme detriment of Indigenous peoples. We're yet to see that. Um, the ICANN, the International um, Internet Governance Body, um, have offered um, new domain names. Uh, we've done a feasibility report on .maori and .aotearoa, and it would cost about $2 million to implement them and we don't see the, there's any real benefit there. Uh, so uh, we'll be working with other indigenous peoples around the world to see if we can work on a, a new indigenous top level domain name, perhaps .indigi or something similar that will protect indigenous culture and knowledge on the internet. Cool. Okay, thank you.